This here, this is the language before time. Language <laughs> before time. I, I thought of that. Thought of that for a little while, and I thought, well, should I say it? Yeah, I'll say it. It just feels like the right thing to say because it really is the language before time, before my time, and before probably your time. Maybe not, depending on uh, how long you've been coding for. Really, this is the uh, the first object-oriented language. This is a wiki page for it. Unfortunately, the actual site itself, well, there's not much. There's not much left. I tried to download it. Um, I tried to use it. it. I couldn't even get access to the uh, Linux version. This language is called simul simula 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 like simulate simula and it was created in 1962 with the next version uh simula 67 obviously released in 1967 so how old is that that is 60 no 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 50 50 8, 50 or 58, 57, 58, 57 years old. So, what can you say? It is old. <laughs> well, the language itself, 62, is 62 years old, but Simula 67, which is the one that was kind of used everywhere, was uh, is 58. So it's very old. Okay, that's the point. And it has everything that you can, well, almost, uh, let, let me just say, it has almost everything that you can find in a modern language, say Swift, Kotlin, it has objects, it is an object, the world's first object-oriented language, 1962, before C, before C++, before Pascal, it has classes, it has inheritance, and by that fact it has subclasses, right, which also allows polymorphism or virtual functions. Well, it, virtual functions are a form of polymorphism. There are different ones. Virtual functions basically means you can inherit a function from a parent class and do an overridable implementation. So it is truly the first language that invented the whole idea of, of like a tree-like structure for inheritance of objects. Um, it, I haven't been able to find information about mixins, whether you can do something like a declaration that is an implementation of an object, yet I haven't really been able to find that. But some other interesting things that blew my mind, this is what really blew my mind, was the idea of coroutines was already there, like in 1962 and 67. I have to double check which one implemented it, but from 60 years ago to have a language, already have coroutines, have the idea of structured concurrency, I was like, well, if that was invented so long ago, why does it feel like a whole new thing in Swift? And wow, we've got structured concurrency in, in Kotlin. We have structured concurrency in, in, in Swift. We have coroutines in Kotlin. I mean, it's nothing new. I mean, perhaps the difference is in the way the compiler informs the user of certain implementation aspects of it. But look, let's not go down that path. Let's talk about Simula. This language was used for a very long time on very large-scale implement, uh, implement, design implementations. It was very, very uh, influential and understated, as clearly here, and obviously understated. It was un the fact that uh, it pretty much defined the, the ideas of object-oriented programming for C++ and for Java, from which a lot of other languages that are now popularly popular in the, in the uh, ecosystem of tech. You know, so the inventors, the inventors of Simula, let me just double check the names because I might get them wrong. <laughs> uh, let's go back here. Inventors of Simula. Oleg Jochen Dahl, designed by one person, and then developer was Kristen Nigard. Old school guys, obviously from Norway. So yeah, object-oriented development in, originated in Norway of all places. Like, who would have thought? I was surprised. I hope you are too. And so much time and so many ideas and so much kind of fermentation and, and, and discussion and evolution has happened since then that, you know, a lot of what we see now and take for granted in our languages came from this. The, this language itself was inspired by Algol, which is the kind of the first step towards a completely procedural language. Algol in influenced C. Uh, you can see, yeah, it was like most subsequent imperative languages 
called algo-like languages like C, right? Uh, C, C similar also. So they came up with the idea of uh, like the, the taking, algo came up with the idea of taking these kind of machine language steps and implementing them in an English language that allows you to understand more so than just writing uh, register in instructions. So it basically took arithmetic and allowed arithmetic, it took logic, it allowed logic in, in code. But what really blew my mind was that only a couple of years after that, there was Simula. You know, very, very simple. It almost reminds me of like a, a, a basic program. You know, you know, I started with basic. I thought basic was like the first language. And, and basic itself, what year was that invented? Uh, Beta, Eiffel, Emerald, Algol, let's see, basic. Basic language. Let's see, there was a basic computer language. Basic computer game, basic family. 19, Atari Basic, 1979, origin. 1959, 19, okay, what year is it? According to basic, it doesn't really say exactly what year it was in. Basic declined in popularity. In 1963, the original version was created, 1963. So we already had Simula before that, 1962, one year. Blows my mind <laughs> that I didn't know about this language until last year. I've been meaning to do this video to try and share this so that you can dive in and see you can see what came before us as, as developers and, and the amount of, uh, I guess, the genius of, of these ideas has been around for a long time. And I'm really interested in the history of where this came from. I mean, geez, these guys, like, they kind of paved the way for everything, that, for pretty much all of the code that you see today, right? It's basic, uh, algo, and, and simula. Really kind of the original tr 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 trunk, the original root. <laughs> roots of the trunk uh, for for the tree of coding. I call it the tree of knowledge, the tree of code, the tree of lang code languages. So guys, yeah, that's it. I just wanted to make you all aware of this language uh, and how amazed I am that I, I didn't know about this until last year. And I hope, you know, if you see this and you've just discovered Simula for the first time, then go check it out. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it. Uh, I couldn't find any uh, compilers. Uh, there's none available for Mac OS, and I couldn't get the one on Linux installed. So that's it. That's it for today. And um, I don't know. I'll see what happens next week. Last week's episode was very contentious. I, you know, it was good. It's good. It's good to raise, uh, make some noise to get some attention and to, and to raise awareness for some of the problems that exist within Swift. And I think it's actually made me want to go to Zig and check Zig out um, because I'm interested in C and I wanted, you know, I might as well just see if I can jump into making some kind of project. I really, I feel like I want to make a game, but I don't want to make a game. Anyway, segue. I'll see you next week for another video. Thanks for tuning in. And if you want, check me out live uh, two days a week on uh, Tuesday and uh, Wednesday, uh, midday Australian Eastern time. Uh, where I just do a live stream of first just news updates, just checking out what's what's going on in the in the uh, tech world, and on Wednesday I just do some coding, just jump on the computer, see what happens. Anyway, see you then. Bye.